Wasabi guys! Now, I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to call this series. I guess I'll figure it out when I make the thumbnail and the title of the video. But I want to kind of get a little bit more personal because I feel like I have kind of detached myself from the content that I make. I know it's all about Magic the Gathering. That's what I do. It's kind of what I've been doing for the past six or seven months. And I don't really think I make a lot of personal videos anyway. I kind of want to make it all professional if I can. Make it about the cards, deck techs, top tens, the usual stuff. Just kind of want to talk about how I started playing Magic the Gathering. How I really kind of discovered my love for it. I never really started with Magic the Gathering specifically, but rather Yu-Gi-Oh! Because I believe I said this before, some of my older videos, I don't think I say it a lot, but I started out playing Yu-Gi-Oh! I sometimes tried Pokemon, although the actual card game never really intrigued me enough. But Yu-Gi-Oh! was really it. I played it, I grew up with it, a sort of the thing. Played that ever since it came out until about four or five years ago when I decided, you know, this game is heading downward and it's not very good anymore. If you're not familiar with what they're doing with Yu-Gi-Oh! now, neither am I really. I believe when I left they were starting the whole Pendulum Monster thing and that really just didn't seem... It didn't seem like a safe move to make because they changed everything, the layout of the playmats they were making, just everything changed after that and it seemed quite obvious that not only were they pushing the ban list even more often than they normally would, making it clear that they were all about making as much money as possible, trying to push their newest shiniest cards on the brand new meta. And it seemed very dangerous because with Yu-Gi-Oh there's usually only one format and that's the advanced format. I believe I've talked about this before in my Magic vs. Yu-Gi-Oh! series. Reflecting on that, I probably shouldn't have made a series about that. It, it wasn't very good. But with Yu-Gi-Oh! The main reason why I left is the main reason why I didn't want to play Standard in Magic. It was very restrictive and it's time sensitive. Meaning that you have to get rid of your cards if you don't want to play with them anymore immediately. Because... You can't wait for ban lists, you can't wait for new decks to come out that basically overshadow the deck that you're playing with, making those cards pretty much worthless. And the ban list is a whole nother problem. It's poorly managed, and it's like they specifically banned cards that were good a few months ago that also came out a few months ago. And hey, you know, these cards were brand new, just put this deck together, and they decided to ban the whole deck pretty much they're banning a couple cards i know it's not the entire deck but they're banning enough cards to make the deck pretty much useless and they've done this before they're experts on how to do this and piss off the players that go to their regional tournaments because they call them regionals and too much money invested for not much of a return the good thing about magic in comparison is the fact that there's multiple different formats but anyway i digress how i really discovered magic I've always known about Magic. It wasn't sort of like someone just told me that Magic the Gathering was this thing that I didn't know about. It was always that card game to me. It was sort of older brother's card game, if you get what I'm saying. It's not a full generation before me, but it's kind of a half generation before me. You see, Yu-Gi-Oh! and Pokemon, those games were really what I grew up with for the most part. And whenever I would go to game stores specifically for Yu-Gi-Oh! and it would sort of be... Oh, well, those are, the, those are the guys over at the Magic the Gathering table. You know, we would be doing our Yu-Gi-Oh! event, stuff like that, and they'd be doing Magic the Gathering on the side, either before the tournament or after it. And I would always be like, I don't really think that card game's for me, it's more fantasy-based. This was before I really discovered my love for fantasy and all that stuff. With Yu-Gi-Oh!, I was more into, like, cartoons. It really just appealed to me because I was already into anime. Obviously, the TV series for Yu-Gi-Oh!, that was so much fun for me. Looking back on it now, re-watching it, <laughs> it was so bad, but as a kid, things just look a lot better to you than they do when you're older, you have a better taste. So it wasn't until about five years ago when I decided, you know what, I'm going to start playing this game. At the time, I was also playing Yu-Gi-Oh! I was getting pretty good at Yu-Gi-Oh! I've been playing it on and off for a while. It was really in high school where I was just playing pretty well. If you were to ask me what specifically I liked about Yu-Gi-Oh! It's been a while since I played it. I mean, that goes to show how detached I am from that game. I don't even remember a lot of what I was playing. And in high school, it was sort of this thing where, you know, I had some friends that would play Magic, and I'd be like, oh, well, what am I supposed to do? I'm just kind of here with my Yu-Gi-Oh cards. No one else wants to play Yu-Gi-Oh. So I think that's the big reason why people switch to other card games, because it's like, hey, 
no one else here is playing Yu-Gi-Oh! or no one else here is playing Magic or no one else here is playing Pokemon, what's the point? Might as well switch over to the other card game. It was really in college though when I decided, you know, I'm finally going to rip off the band-aid. Let me go buy a deck builder's toolkit and it was for the course set 2014. I believe that's what it was, yeah. And it was terrible. Looking back on it now, probably wouldn't have wasted my money on that because deck builder's toolkits are not that great. They just give you some basic lands and some other stuff, but that's about it. Probably would have just saved my money, gone on TCG Player, get a deck, and just run with it. And when I first started playing it, I was like, you know what? I'm just going to build a 60 card deck because that was the thing that really appealed to me is that the deck sizes were much bigger. In Magic, it's just a side deck. Yu-Gi-Oh! you have like an extra deck and it's just a bunch of crap that you really don't know. But with Magic, I'm like, oh my gosh, there's, you know, mana, there's land bases. And I've always known that Magic was this type of game that, oh, well, they're tapping cards and this is kind of what they did. I didn't know specifics. I didn't know cards. I've been surrounded by Magic and other card games for a good part of my life now. So it's not like I just didn't know what Magic was. I just never really had the interest in playing it until four years ago when I finally decided to start buying magic cards that was when I really got involved in playing magic going back to college on my off time because when you're up in college and you just have a ton of time in between classes I would have about an hour and a half to two hours between classes and I would go to the student center now the student center was sort of this place where I would just go you know try to do my homework do stuff like that you know stuff you're supposed to do <laughs> when you're trying to get a degree. But sure enough, there would be a distraction there and it would be Magic the Gathering. Just seeing a couple people there, it really grew over the course of the time I was at college, but it started out with a couple of people. And I remember I would go up to them and say, hey, are you guys playing Yu-Gi-Oh? Oh wait, no, you're playing Magic. And I was like, hey, do you guys play Yu-Gi-Oh? One of them said they did. So I would occasionally go there to play Yu-Gi-Oh! And that would be sort of my thing until I decided, you know what? More of these guys coming to the student center are playing Magic. Why not just join them, play their card game? So sooner or later, I just got a 60-card deck. I believe it was like Vampires or something weird like that. Mono Black Vampire deck. I think it was more or less just a casual deck, but I think it was probably modern as well. It had Vampire Nighthawk. It had Soren Markov. It was crazy. It was, it was really weird, but... I put the deck together, just went on TCG Player, decided, you know what, let me just get all these cards, and I built my first 60 card deck. Now keep in mind, this was before I even started playing Commander, because I think right around 2013 when I started doing this, Commander was a thing, but it wasn't like as big of a deal as it is now. If you were to compare Commander right now to Commander in 2013, a huge difference. Not a lot of people played it back then. Some people were, you know, it was growing as a format, but not to the degree that it is now. So I was having fun playing 60 card. We would play multiplayer games. I was like, oh wow, this game is actually pretty good. As far as mechanics go, the game is just, it's so much fun to play multiplayer. You don't really have this multiplayer experience with Yu-Gi-Oh! It's usually just 1v1. And that would only further my excitement when I started playing Commander because Commander is entirely multiplayer with exception of Dual Commander, which is completely different. But it just seemed like what Yu-Gi-Oh! is a battle, Magic is more like an entire war. The games last longer, it's not about speed or going off as soon as possible, but rather having control over the tempo. You can be aggro, but it's also good to be control. And to me, that just versatility and playstyle, you didn't have this type of diversity and playstyle in Yu-Gi-Oh! It just seemed like the decks that were capable of going off sooner were the best decks in the format. Now I know what you're thinking, well isn't that the case in Magic? Well, yeah, it is, but it's also about the decks that are capable of answering the quickest, too. And it's dependent on the format as well. Like, again, Yu-Gi-Oh! only has one format. Magic has, I don't know how many, six, seven, growing. Because there's always new formats being discovered. People are figuring out what they want to play with. It's just so cool. So, giving up on Yu-Gi-Oh! and moving over to Magic was probably the best decision I've made so far. At least when it comes to my hobbies. Because unlike Yu-Gi-Oh!, I mean, I have so much that I can do with this game. I have so many friends now that I've made with Magic that I didn't make with Yu-Gi-Oh!, not that many people I knew played Yu-Gi-Oh!, and I soon just developed this comfort level with the game that it was very hard for me to do at the beginning, because I knew what the game was, I just didn't know how to play it. And that's always the most difficult part about playing a new game, figuring out the mechanics, and not just that, but figuring out what cards do I need, and how much is this going to cost me, because magic isn't free. Especially when you consider I started playing this game 
when I was in college. Most college students don't have that much disposable income, so spending hundreds of dollars was not an easy thing. But now I can say about four years later on YouTube, whatever I make from YouTube, I pretty much just put into Magic the Gathering and I just have fun that way. So I would say it's worth it. I would say now that I have a good thing here on the side with YouTube because of my love for the Magic the Gathering game. And if I had any regrets, it would just be spending too much time with a game that just really wasn't worth it in the end. And I'm not saying you can't have fun with Yu-Gi-Oh! If you love Yu-Gi-Oh! to each his own, but it just seemed like a lot of money put into it and not enough out of it. If I started playing Magic earlier, if someone introduced me to the game much sooner in my life, I mean, who knows what I would have been able to accomplish in this game by now. I mean, that's just an incredible thing to think about. I know if some of you are hearing this, you're like, oh my gosh, he's only been playing this game for about four years. How much could he possibly know about the game? Well, you'd be surprised what you can learn in four years if you truly dedicate yourself to learning something, trying to master it, trying to optimize your decks. You learn a lot of stuff. I mean, I would say I know a lot about magic. If you were to put me up against someone who's been on and off in this game for the past 15 years... I mean, I might know just as much, if not more, than they do about magic. Just because I spend so much time looking, researching up pretty much anything about this game I need to know. I'm still not perfect, and there's always room to improve. And I hope to spend the next four years of my life in this game, or even more than that, hopefully more than that. And I'm only going to get better at this. I'm only going to try even harder to make my experience in this game better so that I can then share that experience with you guys on my channel. So if you like this series, if you want to hear more about my personal story with the game, hit the thumbs up button, leave a comment, whatever you want to do. Anyway, you guys have a wonderful day. Void here signing off.